Hello and welcome. I'm Saeed from StoryPlanet.net. Dive right into the essence of the most captivating books without reading them cover to cover. Whether you're on the go, at the gym, or just relaxing at home, we offer you a unique and enriching listening experience. Today, we are exploring the book Fair Pay Fair Play, a creation by Robin A. Farrakhan. The book Fair Pay Fair Play 2010 outlines the fundamental principles of fair executive compensation. In these summarizer, you will discover the key elements of reasonable compensation, the reasons behind the disproportionately high salaries of executives compared to other employees, and effective strategies to establish a fair pay structure within your company. Before we delve into these revelations, it's interesting to note that Robin A. Farrakhan, an executive compensation consultant, has accumulated more than three decades of experience. This statement is copyrighted by Robin A. Farrakhan. Fair Pay, Fair Play. Copyright 2010. John Wiley and Sons, Inc. It is only permitted to be used with the consent of John Wiley and Sons, Inc. and must not be shared with unauthorized individuals. With five key ideas to unveil, brace yourself for a deep dive into this captivating book. On StoryPlanet.net To start, the text is about finding a balance in executive pay. Alignid pay refers to the amount of compensation a company pays its executives and ensuring that it is fair. Executives' compensation packages should be set based on various factors and excessive compensation can be detrimental. Cash is just one element that contributes to a great position for successful executives. Key idea number one, when determining executive compensation, it is important to consider the CEO's performance and industry standards. The text argues that executive compensation is often unfair. CEOs are often overcompensated and their compensation plans do not necessarily reflect their performance. The author suggests that compensation plans should also take into account what other CEOs in the same industry are earning. This is important because different industries face different external factors that can impact executive performance. Therefore, it would not be fair to blame a CEO for poor returns if external factors beyond their control influenced the company's performance. Key idea number two, fair compensation can be achieved by adhering to pre-established agreements and prioritizing the overall business strategy. Making impulsive decisions and abandoning goals without thought leads to distorted executive compensation. Compensation plans should be based on predetermined factors, but random decisions or external events can undermine fair pay. For example, granting extra stock options to a retiring CEO on a whim can result in overly generous compensation. Similarly, adjusting compensation without considering a company's long-term strategy also leads to unfair compensation. Sticking with established plans and corporate strategy ensures fair compensation. An example is a company changing its executive pay scheme during the 2008 financial crisis, resulting in lower compensation due to a lack of adherence to the overall business strategy. Key idea number three. Executive compensation plans often provide protections and incentives for CEOs, allowing them to mitigate potential mistakes or short-term risks. Illusory superiority is a psychological phenomenon where individuals believe their successes are due to their own efforts, but failures are caused by external factors. The same mindset can be seen in companies, where executives often believe they are superior to lower-level employees. This leads to executives being overpaid even when a company's success is due to external factors. The mistake is applying a one-size-fits-all mentality to executive compensation, treating public and private firms the same. Public companies require longer-term strategies, while private firms focus on short-term gains. Failing to account for this difference results in overcompensation for executives in publicly traded companies. Key idea number four. Companies sometimes pay executives an excessive amount of money in order to retain them, but research suggests that money alone is not an effective motivator. The belief that money is the only motivator for executives is flawed. Overpaying executives can lead to misallocation of resources and economic stress for companies. 
Many executives are motivated by other factors, such as challenging work, professional growth, and belief in the company's vision. They often stay for reasons other than money and only leave to take the next career step. Key idea number five, tools can be used to ensure fairness in calibrating executive compensation. Executive pay is often seen as unfair, but an alignment report can help guide decisions regarding executive compensation. This report compares an executive's value and performance to that of competitors in the market. It can also determine if a company's compensation design is fair by comparing it to other executives in the same field. To ensure fairness, executive pay should be based on performance relative to others in the industry. In conclusion, the key message in this book is that executive pay is excessive and needs to be reformed. Fair compensation should be based on performance and relative to executives in similar positions and companies. Further reading is suggested on optimizing sales compensation to motivate sales representatives and drive company growth. Thank you for listening to this summary. If you enjoyed this exploration, we invite you to discover other fascinating books on StoryPlanet.net. Don't wait any longer. A multitude of books, stories and knowledge await you there. See you soon on storyplanet.net.